ladies and gentlemen, the Collecting and Connecting podcast, uh, another edition thereof. Thank you for tuning in, uh, whether that is on Spotify, iTunes, 8-Track, VCR, YouTube, uh, wherever it may be. Um, but great to have my cohorts with me. Mr. King, Brett, how are we doing today? Dude. Good, sir. What is up? What's happening? I'm doing good. I've been staring at the screen. I'm like, it's set, it, he said record, but it's not saying record, and now it's recording. And I was about to be like, this is take three, bringing in Tork Hot. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking, Tork. It's a wonderful um, day to be a Mavs fan. Oh. Um. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we got the mayor, mayor, Mr. Tree to get right, This is all. Hey, I'm hot. I'm a, I'm hot off a conversation with my wife about visiting Austin, Texas, and I said we got we can stay with Torque, and she yeah. said, "Who?" <laughs> <laughs> because she knows her as Sir Torque Penderloin, and I said, "She said we can't stay with nobody named Torque." I said, "Oh well, yeah, we are <laughs> yeah, Torque Penderloin." She goes, "Oh okay." I, mean, I, I love tenderloins. They taste delightful. <laughs> they yeah, they kind of goes hand in hand. But uh, guys, we we do have a special guest with us today. Uh, uh, Mavs guest. fan extraordinaire, Mister Nebraska Chase, in the house. How are we doing today? The man who saved doing Trump well. Shot. Thank you for having for me. Yeah. Thank hey, you, you know me. what? And, and this started back with um, hey, I think if hey, if you're going to be in the top shot, you know, going forward, I think uh, I think we should be friends. I think that's paraphrasing, of course. But how did how did the original tweet go? <laughs> Yeah, so it was. Uh, if you're still hold, if you're still into Top Shot and holding through all of this, then we should probably be following each other, something yep. like that. Saved Top Shot right there. <laughs> that was a good vibes day, man. I'll tell it you that. It really much. was. It really was. I honestly, I just posted that like half high, probably a little bit or something <laughs> along those lines, and then woke up to like eighty thousand notifications. It was like, what is going on? Yeah. Like, oh, sometimes the simplest ones are the best. They are. They are. Eighty thousand. I don't even have. I don't even. I don't even know. I can count that high. Well, I mean, that that was a little bit of an exaggeration, but Whoa, you know what I mean. It, it blew up right in our on. circle. Yeah, yeah. That was great. That was great. Good so to be I, here. Thank you for I, having me. What a great time to be a Mavs fan. What a great time to be a Mavs fan. I love it. I'm pumped for you guys. I'm excited to see you get this annoying fan base off. Out, go go away for the rest of this playoffs. I'm, I'm done with the Oklahoma City Thunder fan base. What and happened we, last night in the game? What made Kyrie so? Who was talking to him in the crowd? Can anybody help me with that? Because I don't know. Was that the same fan that threw the ball away from Luca in Game One? I think it was. Pretty sure. Oh, no. the same yeah. spot on the court. Okay. Yep. Okay. What I think did that carried run- over? What, was there a Kyler Murray rumor that he was in the crowd or is, was, was uh, like, like three seats down? Like, so uh, Kyrie was beefing with everybody because Kyrie's prone to beef with fans in the crowd. We get that. But last yeah. night seemed a little much like because he had, you know, when, when the game was over, he was like, all right, bye, expletive, yeah. et cetera, um, which I love. Go Kyrie. Yeah, I like it too. Dude gave his shoes to some kid. Like, what a great dude. All y'all hating yeah. him. Uh, I love whatever. it. I think the Earth is. Uh, I think the Earth's flat now. Quite honestly, I he's made me a believer. He says, I believe. I'm a little bit of a believer in that now too. If Luca believes Kai, then I believe him. <laughs> Clearly, I mean, the things that Kyrie does are not bound by the laws of physics as we understand them as mere mortals. And so maybe he he's tra- he's he's existing on a higher plane. And yes. so I, I I think he's onto something. That's all. I'm I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't know. If- Kendrick is the boogeyman of rap. Kyrie is the boogeyman of basketball. Ooh, I like what you did there. I, like Look at the, I think that's called an analogy, and I like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't mess with Kyrie, man. He's too silky, and he's got all the shirt. I, I like. I mean, even though I know there's this kind of love hate thing, or not love all oh, this hate thing with Boston and Kyrie. I'm a fan. I mean, Kyrie's a day he can ball. I mean, his handles, obviously. Uh, you know, and maybe it's because I'm a little bitter because my mm. team lost their handles. Mm. They've decided not to dribble. They don't want to dribble. I don't think uh, JB ever had a handle, bro. God. <laughs> uh, don't tell him that, though. Like, because he's certainly <laughs> going to convince him otherwise. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I got a question. Treat, do you, when you were a player, were you the kind of guy who was somebody like in the crowd was trying to like, talk shit to you you that that made you play better and you're like no i'm gonna feed off this and i'm gonna show you um 
you know, I, I, I just didn't pay attention. I mean, I, it really wasn't something that uh, there was. I'll say this. I, I didn't get a lot of hate from the fans. I got a lot of love from the female fan. You know, there's a lot of, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, we, go, we, go, we traveled well. The cheerleaders and drill team, you know, were, were fans. Uh, I had, so, you know, I was known around the league as having maybe the best legs, especially the Cavs, uh, which is ironic because my team's getting beat by the Cavs. By the way, it's been a while since we've gotten a calf shot. Uh, we, we we deserve one on the social media. I think okay. the, the people are fine for it. So uh, I figure we would have got one that 5K you ran because you're all sweaty and glistening and your calves were probably cramping, so they would have looked glistening. great. Glistening, he said. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, that's uh, that's something that, like I said, the ladies, the ladies like, especially when I was in high school and college out there on the court. Well, not in college. I sat the bench, so I didn't really sweat much. But yeah, um, I did one time. I was throwing the ball out of bounds, and I felt this something on my leg, and, and a cheerleader was caressing my leg. <laughs> 50% sure that didn't happen, and I'm 50% sure it did. True story. True story. It, you know where it happened? I, Texarkana, I mean, Texarkana, right there on the Texas border. Now I, I bet, definitely believe it. I bet she you know, was yeah. born in Texas and it was it's aggressive. Just like, it's just like dating. Different zip codes, different things uh -huh. are allowed, I think. Can you explain hey. Texarkana for people who aren't familiar with the geography of that weird city and how it exists in three states? It's, it's insane. It's insane. But funny story. Uh, my dad, who was a basketball coach, uh, interviewed Texarkana High, Texarkana, Texas. Ooh. Uh, and I remember as a kid driving around, and uh, he was going to take a coaching job there, but decided to stay in Bryant. Anyway, smart man. Yep. So yeah, it's a weird little 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 uh, conglomeration there, right there on the border. Great explanation. Um, <laughs> Texas, Arkansas, Kansas. It's crazy. It's where they all three touch and meet, and they call it Texarkana. That's how we say it down here in Texas. Yeah, that's that's our little version of the four corners. You know, like they've got, you know, up in the mountains mm -hmm. and whatnot. That's that's what we got down here in, in Texarkana land. Texarkana. Uh, uh, speaking of, of <laughs> things to talk about, uh, Nebraska – did you did you ever play ball growing up? Did you play high school, college, semi pro, pro? Semi uh, I was I was more of a base. If you're talking about like select, I was baseball throughout high school mm. and okay. everything along those lines. Um, got into uh, I didn't I didn't go do anything in college. I had some D three like whatever offers. Decided to go to the University of Nebraska instead and just party and do the normal thing. But oh, Cornhuskers, what up? Oh yeah, for sure. Die hard, man. Go big red. But um, baseball is always my thing. But basketball has been a sport that I've been playing ever since I was a kid in general. Like, you know, if it's right. Y League, pickup games in college, whatever you name it, it's just some of the th most fond memories in high school was all of us just coming over to one dude's house and he had a badass basketball court and set up and everything like that. Nice. And we just played every night after school until dark. And so, like, just a sport that I love. I grew up, you know, more of a player follower. In Nebraska, you don't have a team, really. So it was like right. T-Mac and AI and Kobe and, you know, just kind of followed the players that I liked. T-Mac was my favorite first favorite. Good call. Yeah. And then um, and then it just kind of evolved into – I moved down to Texas in, like, 2012 after college and then just really kind of was already kind of, like, fond of Dirk and the Mavs vibe, and they won it right before I moved down here. So it was just like – just like, you know what? I'm already moving down there. I've never really had a team. I might as well just be on this and stick with it because I'm a Cowboys fan. I'm a Dallas That's Stars fan. I'm That's a Chicago true. Cubs fan. Um, I know. Rangers are my new AL team. Three out of four. That's, That's really interesting. That's three out of four ain't bad, Brett. That's Rangers That's is my AL team. I can say that at least, right? Hey, the, uh, you're back in my good graces. Let's bring it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, hey, must it's, it's a good time to be a, a Nebraska basketball fan, though. I mean, Hoiberg's got them right. They had a good little run. Yeah, I mean, you can't complain when you're a Nebraska fan about college basketball. <laughs> like, it's just never been there. So, I mean, the first time we made it in like 12 years, I want to say, into the tournament, and yeah. it was an exciting team. They ran up against the – I mean, if you guys watched the game, they hit every three Texas yeah. A&M did against us. So, I mean, sometimes yeah. you just – it's not your day, and that was right. it. But 
I think that they, he's got him on the right track. I think that that's the thing that Nebraska's figured out is like hiring the right kind of coaches now that right. they've kind of gone through their Scott Frost experiment and <laughs> they, they, they're, <laughs> like they're putting they're putting their trust in like reliable coaches that are just good at what they do and just like sticking with them. And Hoiberg has been there for like eight years now or so, six years yeah. maybe. I don't know. And he hasn't had any great success, but they've continually extended him and continually let him just build it and just do it the right, right. way. And I think they're going to do the same thing with Rule in a bigger – Matt Rule in a bigger degree, obviously. But, um, yeah, I, I just like the way that they're handling things. Nicest fan base I've ever met. Like, I mean, I've never – like, that. And, and the reputation that, was up to the hype. Like, it's – as a matter of fact, it was – I think the last – it was one of the last – college. well, Texas, when they were playing Nebraska in the Big 12 championship – I was at that game. Today. And Indomitian Kong Su was shot putting cold yep. I was at that game live, and it was actually the most crushing loss of my – Live viewing experience. Wow, hey, wow. Way to bring that up. Way to, yeah. right. way to bring that up. No, but I'm saying like live sports viewing, like that was the right. most crushing live sporting event I've ever been at because we thought we won the game and then they put a second back on the clock and then they kicked that field goal. Wow. And that was like my junior year of college. So that was, uh, we drove down to the whole nine hour drive down for that. It was, it was pretty good. <laughs> pretty, fans pretty were extremely good. gracious afterwards though. Like, a lot of respect, a lot of love. I yeah. mean, like it wasn't there. Who was... would have won Heisman if they would have won that game? Agreed. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It. Mark yeah. Ingram is like the lamest Heisman Trophy winner of all time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Nebraska should have won that game. Like honestly, yeah. they 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 should have. Interesting. So I, I, going so, I know, like, Reed, I know you watched the game. You're a big Cornhusker fan. What? How are your feelings about that game? Me? No, oh, said Tridicus. I was trying to mess with them. Well, I, yeah, I was like, completely what? clueless. Threw them all. Uh, I, How about let's bring you back into the fold then? Nebraska, what's – you? Torque brought up the worst live memory. What about the best live memory? What's the best memory you have going to a live, live sporting event? That's a good question. Um, I ask a lot so of my, it, it, Most of the time they're going to be Nebraska football games. That's just where the passion is, right? Awesome. And so – we Nebraska came awesome. back against Ohio State in a night game, in a Saturday night night game in Lincoln. And we were down by, like, it was the Braxton Miller quarterback era, if anybody follows Ohio State football. Um, and we had Levante David, who was our star defensive player. And we were down by, like, 21 points in the, the second half. He stripped Braxton Miller and got recovered the fumble. And then simultaneously injured him on the same play, kind of. And – changed the whole game and we came back and win and Rex Burkhead wow. had like two big touchdowns late in the game. It was an amazing game. And I was and that was hammered. at home, right? It was hammered. Yeah. It was a home game. So fun. Oh, that makes it even better too. Oh yeah. Like you're this is the night game. We tailgated all day long. We were yeah. hammered, properly yeah. lubricated. As eggs you know. and eggs, baby. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> so that, that's gotta be number one. But I mean, went to a Dallas stars game six, a couple of years ago where we beat the blues and it was a big one, but we ended up losing game seven or no, it was game five. We lost game seven. Either way, it was a big series. That was a fun one. Um, been to a lot of college bowl series games being from Omaha, Nebraska. Those games are always a blast. So I've seen quite a few championship games, but never my team in the championship. So that is what it is. Right. Yeah. That'll happen again. Right. They're going to come back around. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. yeah. I love how all your voice just got. It's like, yeah, we're definitely going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I get it. That's how I get when I talk no, about it. No, but yeah, I mean, th that's my sporting background a little bit, you know. I'm not. No, but you're also you're also a, very, a, a favorite, beloved member of the uh, of the Wolf Pack. That used, <laughs> to be a, used to be something in Top Shop, but now it's kind of dwindled down to just. Hey, the, the core group's in there. I just don't think yeah. we all. <laughs> it's just not the same. Was that a shot? Was that a shot that Treat just fired? Wolf did, did, did Wolf Pack just catch a stray? He invited people to go to the Celtics Discord and discuss Celtics verse. I mean, sometimes I get it, you know, it's like I go in there and I'm like, my gosh, it's so sad This what this used to be. Oh, uh, man, there was a time and a place where it was just the most magical place on the planet. It they really leave was. That chat. They would, could not leave that chat. The big, the heavy hitters we had in there with, like, Steve and Alexo and all those things. And then yep. combination of personalities with Spence. Oh, my Lord. Oh, yeah. it, it was glorious. Can we chronicle the downfall of the Wolfpack from its heyday to now where it's just embarrassing? No. 
I think I think a lot of the stems came from the excitement of the money making opportunity back in the day, back in the day too, because everybody was very active in flipping and um, and really like when, especially yeah, when it came down to uh, flash challenges, when that was yeah. the heyday of that. Yeah. I think that the, the 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 sharing that was involved between the Wolfpack members, like on challenges and things like that, that like right. kept everything afloat, especially when prices were like one MGLA, like a freaking Dante. Even right. a moment uh, or whatever was like going for two hundred fifty dollars, and you're trying yeah, to see like a thirteen hundred dollar yeah. challenge to get the Luca or whatever, and you're just like, oh my god, like is anybody going to lend it to me when you didn't have to lock it? And like right. things like that back then were so fun, and then everybody was just just trying to predict everything that was going to happen with flash challenges, stacking moments, stacking this, That's going right. after this set, yeah, yeah, that set. It, it was just like it was the like remember like the. <laughs> MSFE, I think that might have been the downfall. Oh, ooh, that's true. But that's the metallic, the, they have Steph Curry Master Challenge set. Yep. Metallic silver, right? Yep. If I'm not yeah. mistaken. I think that that deflation that killed Spence. I know that killed Spence on the top shot, like all yeah. together. Like yeah. a deflation yeah. of that and that whole how that all rolled out. I think a lot of buzz killed, and then they stopped the flash challenges because of that. I feel like because that was yeah. like the end of the flash challenge era. That was kind of, I feel like, near the end of that, where that's, that was like yeah, the downfall. It ran its course. That's okay. We have it right here, folks. But then I think CC kind of got created right after that. It was in the right. doom and gloom era. And then, you know, we got Treat coming out with videos uh, daily, just trying to yeah. hype up everybody. Yeah. And we and, and, and then you threw your, your t uh, tweet out there and, uh, and bada bing, bada boom. Bada well, bing, I think bada boom. What we can guarantee at this point, though, is everybody who's still here really enjoys the product. And That's like, right. even if it's 5,000, 8,000, whoever the daily active users are, I don't keep track, but like, based on, you know, based on the leaderboards on uh, Fast Break, I mean, I guess that's about how many people are on there, right? I, think I mean, you're right. I think that's you're probably close. Active. Yeah. Like, active people. And like, yeah, sure, there's a lot of moments. Values aren't what they used to be, but I've like come to terms with my collection. You know, it's like it, oh, yeah. it is what it is. I don't need to sell it. It is just a part of my portfolio now, for better yeah. or worse. Like it is what yeah. it is. But Absolutely. I still collect like every Mavs moment. I pretty much always try to collect. Maybe not every rare, not everything, but like I've got every series is going to be collect checked off the box. I've got my one Luca legendary. I've got everybody's debuts. I got most of the stars debuts in general. So like I feel like I've got every rookie debut view over the last couple of years. Nice. Just focusing on debuts and mm -hmm. Mavs moments, pretty much. So everything yeah. else can get out of the way, unless if I pull something cool in a pack, then I'll keep it. You know. Right. Well, that uh, you know I, that the debut thing is something I've thought about recently. I went back and was looking at some series one debuts uh, that you know when I first started collecting them, no way I'd ever get them. Uh, so I have so many bad negative losses because of uh, debuts, but yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. So I'm thinking about after these playoffs, maybe focus on that this summer. Uh, anyway. I do, I do think that still, and I think there's truth in it that the actual rookie debuts though are still way more important. Like, I, I, I would like to see like it's the first point of their first game, real time printed, like not this random moment from their from this random season, and it's not really their rookie debut. You know, like I feel like mm. there's some gray area. Like, is the LeBron more important than his most points scored game moment like right. is his debut which one would you think would hold up better over time just some random dunk in a game or the one that he breaks the record right. i think that that like there's certain areas yeah. same thing with the, the curry same thing with the curry and his record breaking mm -hmm. three i think that those there's better moments for those players out there that right. should probably be owned versus that moment that's a good thought i hadn't thought about that but the rookie debut, I think, is absolute. Like, I think that that's the coolest thing. Yeah, like, I have the, that. the quad badge, like the yep. Victor Wembanyama, like three. Like, it just okay. You gotta have it. Gotta have it. I'm with you on that. I got. Yeah, I've been. I've been focused on that. Samuel D. Uh, converted me to the day. Stack of rooks. Stack, stack of rooks. Yep. Yep. Good stuff. I mean, that's just card. I mean, cardboard 101, right? Yeah, it is. You lose some, you win some. You know, yeah. it's, it's the, we're having fun. We're having a it's good just, time. It's like literally just a fun passion side thing. Like, you know, yeah. it's just, it's yeah. just fun. And That's if it, it keeps me interested in the NBA more, all, all for it, because I do, I can admit like regular season is a lull at points and without fantasy basketball and top shot, I don't think I'd watch. 
I mean, maybe just the nationally televised games here and there, you know, and then yeah, right. I tune in for my Mavs games, but that's, you know, stream oh, yeah. East type shit because I don't have, <laughs> I don't have the cable provider I have gets blocked on everything. So yeah. same here, man. Whoa, how this messed is up is that? Let's yeah. Top shots are great. Cable yeah. providers. You're horrible. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was in a local game and I can't even watch it on my dude, own TV real, in the so city of Dallas. So frustrating, man. Like, get out of here, dude. I, I can't, even if I have like for MLB TV, for instance, with Rangers and Astros, I can't watch them and I can't watch them on local TV because it's blocked. So I'm, I'm forced to literally have to use like Stream East. So yeah, yeah it's the worst. Yep. I, I, I'm, I'm in the dead zone for uh, OKC. Mavs and Grizz. It's that's the three you get blocked on. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. Hey, well, at least uh, Oklahoma City tried to sell you tickets before they did the state of Texas, so that's good. <laughs> For, I don't know. They limited I, ticket purchases. It was I all would, I, Oklahoma, I would, Arkansas. It was like three or four I, other states. I and did you hear them. at the end of the game last night though? Uh, right. That it was, it was a bunch of Mavs fans cheering, "Let's go Mavs!" And then you could see like Mavs players be like, "Come on, yeah!" So apparently the strategy didn't work out quite so well, and Mavs fans are going to kick the door no matter what. I mean, it's oh, not that far of a drive, man. That's right, right. for nope. sure. I've nope. driven Let's there go. many a time. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's, I like that though. I like that they came and took it. They came and took it, especially yeah. the OKC. They need They're to whining. That, that will say though the OKC fans, it's not like the Philly New York situation that happened earlier, where like, <laughs> like I feel I feel like OKC fans they they keep their tickets cheap for a reason up there, man. They can all afford them. Yeah, but it's really so they can all buy weed because weed's legal there. But yeah, also the game that works. Yeah, too. but they and come in rowdy. Wild. They come in rowdy. So yeah. SGA should have been the, the MVP. I still I cannot believe he was number two in the voting like i got, I got, jokic. Here, I got jokic like whatever jokic is whatever he is we'll look back and be like well luca probably could have won more if it wasn't for luke like the jokic you know yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah like yeah. yeah i just don't see how sga no i just feel like they didn't watch the games man i watched a lot of okc games and i watched a lot of maps games a lot and look lucas lucas i mean he's a generational talent I mean, he just is. And it sucks it, to see him banged up right now, too, because you could yeah. totally tell. If you've watched him all season long, he has, like, very little burst right now, if any. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't well, I, I do like when we keep, you know, Oklahoma City keeps body checking him and making him face plan to hit his face into the ground. He gets up, and then he just plays better. Oh, so, dude, the more they beat him up, the more he's going to be. Like, that's yeah. why I'm still confident. I was confident after game one, even. I was just like – Dude, Luca is a dog, man, and that's like the best thing to have in a star. Like, and maybe a. Anthony Edwards is like this too. Like, he looks oh. like it, but like, and Brunson obviously is. I mean, I wish that we still had him, but he would have never became who he was if he didn't leave and get his yeah. own chance. Like, yeah. he would have sure. always played second fiddle, and like, he needed to have a chance to be. I mean, he pretty much, I feel like he mirrored and copied how Luca plays. Like, he learned a lot from him. He had to have yeah. because of yeah. how he plays. Yeah, it's very similar. <laughs> It's uh, and and um, you know I, that's the thing about Tatum that you you wonder right I mean he's a hell of a player but then there's just times where he's just they you know it's he doesn't have that same killer instinct he just kind of gets feels like it's soft uh, and you don't you know you want it hard he's a mystery man. I like the Celtics team. You guys have a banging squad, but like it is a, it's it. You when you guys flop a game like that, it's just like, uh, what is going on? I yeah, don't what's understand. That? But like, I uh, probably will still win the series. You'll probably beat the shorthanded Knicks, or you know, and definitely the Pacers in the next round. Like, but when you come up against one of these big powerhouses out of the West, like, I don't know what's going to happen. Right. Man. Uh, that's exactly know. right. I mean, I think that's where you start to go. Can this team, uh, you know, dig deep and find the, find the middle strength, right? To like, push through. I, like, I don't think anybody wants to play the Wolves right now. Like, they look ridiculous. No. Somebody needs to, somebody needs to slow them like, that's down. That's the worst matchup for the Mavs, too, in my opinion. They're the only team that they can just body them for anywhere sure. they want to. Like, it doesn't – every position, they're bigger than us. Is, crazy. Is, there, is there a possibility that 
and I'm playing a little bit of devil's advocate here because obviously Minnesota looks great. But is there is it a possibility that they're just like, nope, Nuggets beat us last year. That's our focus this year because they won the title. We beat the Nuggets. We're go we're good to go. And maybe there's a little bit of a letdown after they get past that mental that mental that hurdle, be, so to speak. That, that that would be, I mean, first of all, there's a lot of series left. Like, the Nuggets yeah. could easily come back. I'm just saying, like, based on matchups, I think the Mavs match up better with the Nuggets, the Nuggets on paper. I think that that would be my favorite matchup, and I'm going to root for mm. the Nuggets because of that. Mm. Um, I because I don't think, if, especially when Gobert's there with a healthy with a healthy cat, and they've got Jaden McDaniels and Knock, yeah, Alexander Walker. I'm trying to think. Yeah, Nikhil Alexander Walker. Yeah. Like they'd be the ones on Luca all game. They're long defenders. Conley's the veteran leader. I, I don't know. They just have the full. They have the team. They can do it. I don't know. I just don't like them. I don't want to play them. I, I, I'm with you. But Stack we gotta get that OKC first. So whatever. Well, and and Kleba going down hurts uh, our, our you know front court versatility. I mean that a lot of people you know you guys watch the Mavs and so you know like how much of an impact when he's healthy and playing well. He allows Gafford to kind of roam and do what he does, uh, you know, defending the backboard. So, eh, we'll see, man. I mean, but like, like, we, like we talked about. I mean, everybody's banged up nowadays. It's kind of like last man standing, and who can be the healthiest at the end of the year. And uh, we'll That's see. But staying healthy, yeah, that is okay, true. Healthy, yep. staying. I was worried about Gafford last night. I was like, oh my god, like what is going on? Like if we lost him, because Lively looks a little. Under his, uh, he looks a little rookie-ish right now. Like in the yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, and, it's my uh, team. I feel like I can say this. Yeah. I feel like the only way Lively can score is if someone throws the ball up to the basket and he slams. He's got a free lane. He's a great dunker, but Chet meets him at the rim every time, and he can't yeah. get over Chet, and he's, like, got no confidence right now, it feels yeah. like. And, and, and he's Stafford's just – got no fear at all. <laughs> he's, he's just so – in, yeah. in terms of his – sorry, Brett, my bad. No, no, no. I was just saying the words, full send. Now it's your turn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Lively's just raw in terms of his yeah. just general understanding. I mean, he's learning, and he's going to be really, really, really damn good because he's got, like, Tyson Chandler looking after him, guys who oh, understand. Yeah, put some muscle on him a little play. bit. Yeah, man, he's – but now he's – it's like, I mean, we're talking, like, three-dimensional chess on a very high level with some <laughs> of these matchups, you know, going right. on in the playoffs, and it's hard because right. it's, it's very much matchup-based and read-based – and yeah, every team knows each other's sets. And so it's like, okay, what's your secondary read? What's your third read? What's your fourth read? And are you right. going to play off? Your, and so, you know, and then it just goes from there. So he's, I think he's looked good on defense. He's just yeah. been a little lost yeah. on offense. So he's not rolling right. He's not dunking with the same aggressiveness. I feel like he did earlier in the season or mid throughout the season. Right. It's, just, it's the playoffs. It's just aggressive. He's yeah. new. He's rookie. I mean, it is what it is. That's why I just, if we lost Gafford, I would have been, I think, that would have been a huge blow. Like, I don't think, yeah, I don't yeah. think, yeah, I don't think we could have overcame that. El Marino, Arkansas. Uh huh. Arkansas. Know, some some might have said the same thing about the Cavs without Jared Allen. You know that they were done. I was saying that. I was like, well, if the Cavs can't, they're not going to beat the Celtics. And then, you know, but the Celtics are missing Chris Stapp, so it's it, it's it's hard a to gauge of a watch there. Yeah. It's the NBA, man. You just, I mean, all these players are good, and you gotta. It's in, they in, are, especially man. these the playoffs where they're just. Get deep into these matchups and really how, know each other. How refreshing is it though to watch playoff basketball for real though? Because like I feel like if you guys have watched as much yeah. NBA as I do, it is it is kind of a snoozer a lot of the time. Nobody plays defense, and it is yeah. so refreshing to actually watch no. playoff basketball. And these people are locking people down. The refs are letting them take it to the hole and not calling a whistle on everything. Well, no, for the most part, I'm just saying like they're play, yeah. letting them play more physical than they do during the regular season. I do. Um, Outside yeah, of maybe real basketball, game, but not that the others fake, but I feel like it's the whole complete yeah. game of basketball. Yeah, right it's what makes, that's yeah. It, the whole season is worth it once you get here, and especially when you get to these second and third rounds and the teams match up better, and it's just it's just fun to watch, man. Every it every, really every is. because you in the NBA game, it's like they get up by twenty, and you're like, oh whatever, like oh. well you know every point matters. They say, but in the playoffs, you feel it. Like you're like, okay, we need to chip this to twelve. We need to chip this right, to like, right. Yeah. yeah, like you got to get it in striking distance, you know, and like and that makes you enjoy the game because you're like looking for these mini runs to catch up, and you're just or you're up by twenty, and you're like, don't blow this lead, yeah, exactly. Put the pedal to the metal, like let's go. Yeah. But in the regular yeah. season, it's like there's never any urgency to come back. Like nobody steps up their intensity because they're down by 20 or anything. It just feels like they're like, oh, if we make uh, some shots, maybe 
you know, <laughs> like there's no changes, the defensive strategies. Yeah. Yeah. It's just trying not to get hurt, you yeah. know, because, yeah. you know, I just, just trying to get our paychecks and move on. Some teams play that way. Not the Celtics, though, right? They no, 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 no. But, hey, I think that's part, of the, that's part of the switch, right? It's part of the mental switch when you get in the playoffs. It's, uh, you know, you got to you gotta be tougher. You can't complain again about every freaking foul call. No. You got to get back. You got to prepare. Every, you got to stay locked in every game. because Which is still Luka's downfall, right? <laughs> that was so, so hard not to say it. No, no, you, you guys are thinking the same – I he's he's my favorite player bar none, but yeah. he is a whiner. Yeah. yeah. Is he getting a I little guess. better though, Brett? Like just a little bit, like given like that he's reacting. I mean, on a scale like, of one to a thousand, he's definitely getting better. Yeah. I don't know what scale you're referencing. I wanted to set a geographic scale, Texarkana. <laughs> it's close. I mean, no, to go back to something Nebraska Chase said earlier about. He's reacting better to like getting kicked around, like guys just running in front of him, stopping, trying right, to trip his ankles right. up and stuff. So that part I'll give him credit for. He still whines a lot. And to Treat's point about like, dude, you got it. Like, like he still tr- doesn't track back on defense after something doesn't go his way on offense. And it's like, right. bro, you can't do that in the playoffs. Like, yeah, you got to just, run. Yeah. yeah, address it. Talk to the ref during the timeout or whatever you got to do, but don't don't do that. And so hopefully he's gonna break out of that. I keep waiting to see different signs, but nah, not so far. Eventually, yeah, it worries me maybe. Out. Yeah, maybe. Eventually. I don't know. It, it, it's just some people are just like that. I mean, Tim Duncan was a complainer. He did the same kind of shit. Bro, yeah, the whole time we've been talking about, about this, I've been thinking about Mono Ginobili and Tim Duncan. Mr. Mm-hmm. Flopper and Mr. Complainer. Tim yep. Duncan with his like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ginobili, like, you wouldn't even touch him. He'd be like, ah! Yep, the incredulous palms up, big eyes. Yeah, just like, yeah and just like, yeah. No, I mean, there's, there's just. I don't know. I, let's just hope he, he overcomes it for the most part. I just think that's why he gets hated on by so many fans most of the time yeah. because they just see that and they're just like so, but did, he learn it, did he did learn it? Did he learn it from LeBron? No, no. LeBron's generational too. <laughs> in their defense, though, if you're if you're experiencing the kind of stuff Luke is experiencing this series with the way that OKC is treating him, if I were him, I would act like I got murdered every time somebody. I don't touched blame him. him. I don't. Well, well I don't blame away, him. I, yeah. I, I think he should embellish it more when it's in live, like SGA and Harden do, because yes. I think he complains about it after the fact. But I've seen him take like hacks to the arm, and he just tries to play through it. And he just and right. complains right. after. If right. he just like let that right. kind of just broke down and like let the contact stop play essentially then they'd call it every time it's just i don't know but then we'd yeah. see him like i guess there'd be a lot of turnovers i don't know what would happen the refs might not call it every time but he gets hacked a lot he yeah. just tries to play it's like he always goes for that like he's a gamer but he complains after the fact which yeah. bangs you up on defense more that's a good point yeah so and you see that you see that the guys like you're saying uh Harden SGA, the guys that kind of feel it. You know, another one that's like this is a, a Kyle Lowry. Can you know that guy can make it look like a foul? But I don't know how he does it, but just the way he moves, the way he creates contact, and just will fly off. I mean, it just those, looks like a foul. Those Villanova guys, man, him and Jalen Brunson have that innate ability to just like yep. create. Like you just act like you just. It's like it's like a super scion and Dragon Ball. Like you just explode out, like you know, or something. Like you just got hit. I don't know. Like it's just weird. After it's, nobody even touches you, the baiting is a skill that you can't teach. Like, no baiting. Yep. No yeah. way baiting. Unless you're the master of it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Speaking of being the master of things, are you? Uh, how do you feel about redemptions? Are you? Do you have any? Are you doing? Oh it yeah, man. It? I'm a. So I, I bought like three rare packs and I stacked up on Boston Nuggets and Mavs. That was just kind of my angle at the beginning because I was like, okay, Boston's gonna run the East. Nuggets. I ended up selling off my Boston ones and some of my Nugget ones, like the the, the fandom ones, because I was just yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I just the more I just wanted to focus on just the Mavs. It's too overwhelming for me to take on the whole playoffs. Yeah. Like it's just too big of a set, yeah, especially since I want the rare ones more than I want the fandom ones in general. Like right. so, like if I really want a moment, maybe I'll go out and buy that. Maybe I don't know. Like I got the Jamal Murray like buzzer beater. Like I thought that was worth having, um, but I got a couple rare packs. I sold off. I've been trying to time my rares to sell them off at the top. Like, so my OKC one is the last one I have left. I've been selling them when they're like looking like they might win the series, you know, because in the price right. peaks, you know, right. or whatever. Yeah. So I've been selling them off, but I have four 
I've got five Mav Rare Redemptions, so I've got one for every step of the way and the Champion's Path, and I've got five Fandom for each along the way as well. And I've just been doing the nice. whole Love redeem it. them all except for one, and then yeah. so I did just pull a number three Rare Kyrie though. Whoa! Uh, yeah. No way. Through number Thank three you. cereal because I got four of those, and then top shot accounts <laughs> King Brett, by the way. No, oh, nice, yeah. But I got, yeah, I got a number three and a number twenty-eight of the Kyrie, and then I did get one of the Luca. Um, what are they called? Astras. Yeah, did yeah Astras. Really? Nice. I got one of the Astras. A nice. 31. Yeah. So yeah, I'm doing the Mavs thing full tilt. Like I've got I'm committed to it. Like yeah. Like I got them all like at forty dollars. I bought all my rare redemption ones for like forty dollars when they lost like oh, game awesome. one of the Clippers. Like I went and yeah. stocked up on them, so they're all up, and it's just timing thanks, those things thanks for telling me and saying i should do the same i really appreciate it it's oh really yeah nice of you. <laughs> yeah just like crypto plays man i don't want any you know do your own research bro <laughs> no the rule is for friends buy it first everything you want then tell your friends about it yeah so the price goes up. Yeah, i'm not i'm not good at the whole pumping man i don't know why i'm not good at it <laughs> I, I would pump you up yeah but either way, I'm stocked on the bad stuff, so I'm I'm good on that. I just have to hope that they follow through on there, and man, because uh, or else that you know I'll take a little ding. But hey, I just really want that uh that champions path, all Mavs, baby. Just imagine yeah. that Luca glowing one with the championship trophy at the end with <laughs> Kyrie giving him a hug. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, I love it. You know what we're doing? It's positive thinking. Dude, we're putting out into really. the environment what we want to see happen. Mm -hmm. This is good stuff. That's that should be our do, daily man. affirmation, all four of us. You got to put it out there. there. You got to put yeah. it out there. Yeah. Always. So, yeah, that's my positive thinking on it. But, yeah, that's what I'm doing with the playoffs, man. Just enjoying it. Mainly Good. just watching. I'm just trying to catch as many games as possible because they're all – I mean, if they're a bad game, they'll turn it off. But right, if it's right. a game, man, they're worth watching every time. So, like, question, All a lot of the games have been late at night. Like, Yeah, I, I'm your, a night owl, so. Is your, and I know you, you got a kid uh, is, like, I'm not sure how old. Yeah, like, I got a three-year-old. He's already asleep. Three-year-old and so another like, one on the way. Three-year-old and one on the way. Nice. Yeah, no, so, I mean, their bedtime is 7.38, and then, you know, that's that's honestly the time. That's my time after that, you know. Yeah. Me and my wife will watch either, like, a movie, and maybe I'll have a game up on the tablet. Or I'll just be upstairs watching games and have something else on the tablet. Some Has there been like a moment where like the kiddo's asleep and all of a sudden you just yell because you forget your kid's sleeping and you're so excited? <laughs> no, no man. I've, I've, I've trained myself. No, not waking them up. Oh, I can't wait till we win the championship and you forget that you trained yourself and you do it. I'm going to be <laughs> Rangers, so mad. Rangers game seven was kind of like that. Oh, like, dude. Uh, yeah, that was a pretty, that 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 home run or no game the game game one the Seager home run the that Seager, was the one I'm referring yeah. about. Yeah, Seager game the Seager home run game one was the one that I probably almost did that for sure. Dude, I love it. Love yeah, it. It's a good call. I'm just a sports nerd, guys. Like, yeah, I could talk sports all day long. That's great. Good for you. You know who else could? So could Torque and so could Triticus. No, listen. I'm a mayor, so I have stuff to do. I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. The uh, oh. And no, the I I will watch playoff games, um, but there's so you know it's it's got I can't stay up. I I, I just the late ones are tough, man. I, I mean I am falling asleep. I, I'm trying to stay up. I'm you know I'm getting snacks. I'm trying to drink. That's your coffee. problem. Don't eat. That makes you want to go to bed. Does it? I because I I'm snacking to try to stay up. Oh, you got to snack on healthy stuff like. Carrots and, and then I wake more. up to use the bathroom and I have to check the score. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> that's what happens. Dude, I, I, if you're East Coast time zone, I don't know how people watch sports and like on the East Coast, man. Like, <laughs> it'd be a dream, in my opinion, sports wise, to live like Mountain Standard Time would be like ideal. Oh, because yeah. then you have everything the perfect time. Like games instead of starting like, here, I feel like most games end up starting at seven or something like that. Yeah. Like Monday yeah. night football, seven thirty, you know, stuff like that. But I think yeah. six thirty gives you time to like get dinner, pop on the TV. Yeah. That's man, Mountain Standard Time. I think is the sweet spot. But I'm getting up at I'm getting up five o'clock every morning. So I mean, I can't be dragging. I can't be yeah, staying no, up tough. till you know, midnight and then watching. But even though I'd love to, but it just doesn't happen. I just yeah. fall asleep. Maybe it's because I'm old, Torque. I mean, 
Otherwise, Either that, or I think it's a testament to probably the amount of focus and energy that you're putting into the community that you're serving. Okay, thank you. Welcome best to possible way, and and and, and, and that's how much you're giving. Because at the end of the day, you 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 know you want to give to your Celtics, but you can't because you know it's 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 all spent for for, it's spent the, other for the people. And so, so King Brett's seen our welcome to Brian. You like? That, I though? love them, dude. I think Don't they're you great. Love those? I want to be in one. Like, can I just come visit Brian? Yes. You want to be like, we can visit make Brian. that happen. We can make that happen. And, yeah, and you yeah, know, I love your videos. I, maybe you could say, I feel welcome to Brian. Ooh. Now, if you tell me I can wear the onesie that I wore the first time I ever of met you in you public, can. yes. I did. True story. First time I ever met Trivikas in public in a public place, which was Brian Copper Mule. Copper, Copper Mule, Mule. Yep. great place. Go check it out if you're ever in Bryant. Support local businesses. Yeah, uh, I showed up in a once <laughs> a abominable snowman onesie. Nice right? try. And my then fiance, now wife, was like, "I don't understand why you're doing this. This, this, <laughs> idea. this guy's not gonna like you. You're gonna uh, meet his wife I love it. right now. This I is not it. gonna go well." I'm like, "Just wait." I love it. Great. You look great, great, man. You look great. I mean, yeah, you look I don't, good. The wives don't understand the bond that's formed over digital collectibles, man. What it, you know? They don't get it. They don't. It's it is a different. Uh, I was like, we. Different. I went to summer league with the Wolf Pack, like the year that Chet Holmgren got drafted and was in the summer league. So like two years ago, I guess. Yeah. And that was a good time, but yeah, it was like met all these guys from the dang chat, you know that that yeah. Wolf Pack chat, and none of us yeah. had ever met, and then it was just like all homies. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy how uh, it is. I mean, we really are friends, uh, and the connections you make. I, and dude, that we we've talked about it at some point. We got to have a C and C con uh, and get everybody together. The summer league thing is a good idea. It really is, it, isn't it? Because like I just did a quick like two day trip, right. like you know, yes. go for the, and we were at the summer league for five six hours both days or whatever, and then you just kind of. Take the red eye home, man. It was a good time. Well, I've thought I've thought about driving to Dallas, and then we could all fly out together, Dude, or just come to Dallas in general, man. That, yes, we don't have is. to do. Yeah, just come to Dallas. We're gonna have a mini one right here. That's You're true. Like I mean, three I, hours away. My brother lives there. King That's Brett's true. been in his pool with me true and story. his grotto. Mm. True story. It's quite delightful. <laughs> Now, Brad, have you been to Summer League a lot? Like, have you gone multiple times, no. or was that your first time? Yet? That was my first time. I'd love to go back. That was my first time ever in Vegas, actually. But, um, wow. yeah, no, it was uh, it was cool. I met Jamal Murray at the casino. That was awesome. Wow. So, he was, he's a really cool guy. We're, like, the same height, so that kind of surprised me. But, really? Uh, well, I'm, like, I mean, I know I'm 6'2", but you just assume NBA players, you know, they're just always going to be. Well, like, he seems – Tall. I mean, he does six three, six four. We're close to the same height. Whatever. It's just like I you mean, know, you're like NBA player. That's cool. Like I could be one now. You know. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, uh, me there's a chance. Tyler Hero. I, we would say when I saw one of the times I won tickets. Thank you, NBA Top Shop Grizz Gang. Uh, it was uh, Grizzlies and uh, the Heat. Tyler Hero looks like a normal person, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you think he looks normal? Like as far as like his, he's not huge. He's not massive. He looks like just a regular human. Regular. I mean, I'm pretty sure all of them are regular humans. Yeah. They don't look awesome. that way. They're freaking yeah. massive. The guards, the guards usually are okay, right? Yeah. They, they're all normal height. Yeah. You know what? When I met Shaq, I was like, I totally could be an NBA basketball player. Yeah. <laughs> he's only like eight feet taller than me. It's not a big deal. His hand covered my whole entire chest. Yeah, that's no big deal. It, but yeah, why, why do you have to stop you? Because he had to go pee. And you were and, following him in there? Yeah, yeah. I was trying to take a picture with him. He's like, <laughs> stop wait, talking. Wait. Just take the picture. Stop and I was typing. Like, Whoa. And he's like, I got to pee and put his hand on my chest and stop me oh, from okay. walking. You were in the bathroom. bathroom with him trying to take a picture. No, I set up all the cameras in there previous to oh, that encounter. Wow. So that way we're covered there. Um, it was wonderful, but yeah, all I know is I can shoot better free throws than Shaq, so I could be in the NBA at five at five eleven and three quarters. Did you see some pictures of him with a new girlfriend? Did you see that on the? No, I just got married. I'm never gonna have a new girlfriend again. <laughs> oh, Shaq! No, I don't. Go I don't like. I'm not a 
technologically advanced type of guy. I, like, I just buy Top Shot moments. I don't know what you want from me. Where would I see this? TMZ or America's Funniest Videos? It's genuine questions. Torque, say something. You're just sitting there laughing. I'm, I'm wondering uh... – if this was like a trial, it'd be like objection, Your Honor. He's leading the witness. Like I don't know what Trish trying to get at. Uh, I don't know. I, don't know. I think what he was asking is how did <laughs> how'd you get how'd you get in to even find out about Top Shot in Nebraska? Yeah, it was actually uh, it was um, the ticket, the radio station. No way. Are they you were. I was, I was driving was to work. I was driving to work that faithful February morning. Yeah. where Top Shot was blowing up, and they, for some reason, one of them, I can't remember who it was in the morning, um, which Miller maybe, um, either way, he was like, uh, did you hear about this NBA Top Shot thing? I bought like a, some, just, he was just like, I think he just said like a random basketball player, not even good, like Michael Porter Jr. Yeah. or something like that. I mean, he's good, but whatever. And he was just like, he was just like, uh, I bought one, and then ten, out, 10 minutes later, I sold it for like 50 bucks, you know, and I was like, what is this? And I'm like, wait, wait, I logged on. How do I make money? Yeah. yeah, and I logged on, and I remember my first moment I bought was a uh, – God, what was my first moment? He was an ex-Nebraska player, and he's not even in the NBA anymore. Mm. But it was like $30 for a common moment. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's cool. He's a Nebraska alum. And then after that, mm. it was like I just like got a pack, sold it, and then I hit a rising star pack. That's when I started, and that was really Ooh. when it started. I hit a rising star pack, and I got like the uh, Dort, funny enough. I nice. I it rare. Nice. And I sold it for like five hundred and fifty dollars, right? Wow. It was like boom. You're we're like, I'm rich. Running. Yeah, we're off and running. So then it was just like I was trying to do the whole buy and flip, like watching it like a stock market. You could tell my work performance tanked for like those first <laughs> couple months because yep, yep. I was living on top shot, like watching money go up and down and just like yep, trying to yep. sell, buy, sell, buy, and just playing the game. And at the same time, taking those profits and buying players I liked. So I was like buying right. Carmelo moments and Back then, it was not a lot to choose from. Luca, you know, but those were all like even the commons were like sixty bucks for Luca, so it was yeah. like whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. and then, um, and then, yeah. So I just did that for a couple months and was just building up a modest little commons collections or whatever. And um, you know, bought a couple moments that I regret, like the Mar mellow, like Top Shot debut, and was like, or no, the Carmelo, not Mellow, but Carmelo Mellow, the OG Mellow. Uh, oh, gee, his God. debut and it was like six hundred dollars and it went down to like twenty dollars like within the next like six months but either way um wow and then I, hit, I hit i hit a lego pack a legendary pack Whoa. um in I, I think it was like probably like june or whatever like that first it was the uh, holo series two um series two like legendary pack whatever and i hit the lebron and it was like serial number nine and Jeez. i sold it to one of those whales. I can't remember off the top of my head now. Probably like some $36,000. $36,000. Yeah. What? Jeez. Yeah. And I thought I hit the jack. I mean, it, it, for me, that's the jackpot. That's the biggest, the closest thing I've ever had to a jackpot, right? Is like hitting so. that moment and then selling it. And I poured <laughs> stupidly, pretty much poured all that back into Chop Shot and, uh, <laughs> and got like the cool cat set at its peak, you know, and got that's, like, you know, that's smart. all these, you know, I got the Luca debut. I bought a little, you know, LeBron debut. I did like the whole throwdown set that spawned the whole Wolf Pack entry. So nice. it kind of started everything for me was that legendary pack. And because I mean, just frankly, I was like, I wasn't about to lose all my savings trying to invest in this stuff. So if it wasn't right. for that, I would not have been so invested. Right. And so like right. that really always been a fan, but like, got to pick and choose your battles with money, you know. So, yeah. um, but no, it just carried on. And like I said, everything that's in there, like I, I don't think I've ever really withdrawn any money. So it's just all been there. It's all been in the system, all been circulating. I do that's regret cool. buying NFL all day, even though I love the NFL, but I wish that was just all top shot money at the end of the day. But. Right. Um, well, now I feel like I know why I'm still trying to chase you on the Mavs leaderboard. Uh, there's know. a good reason for that. There's a Luca yeah. Cool Cats giving me like twenty eight thousand. You know, oh my gosh! Is <laughs> yeah, he, that covers the two thousand. I'm behind you right now. Yeah, like that that Cool Cat moment probably that's so silly. Twenty five hundred dollars worth of Cool Cat Luca. <laughs> but <laughs> no, it's a no. It's it's awesome, man. I love my collection. But well, it loves you back. 
Hey, listen, you're a key. You're a really important collector in the community, man. Uh, I'm so glad that, that, uh, that we met through this, bro. I mean, it's, uh, that's the thing, the ups and downs of this whole wild ride. It is really about this friend, the friendships we've made, the people we really like. And I, we're doing this thing in Dallas, uh, this summer. Hit me up. Uh, We're going to get together. Basketball game. A little friendly. A little friendly. If we need to. (laughs) I like that. I, like I would love that. to. Uh, but before we roll, what uh, any any last thoughts, Nebraska Chase? Any any parting thoughts for us? No, um, I, I'm curious to see what Top Shot does next year without a rookie like Wemben Yama. Yeah, um, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to be very cautious next year, if I'm being honest, about how much I buy right out the gate and see where right. the, kind of where things go because I think that that drove so much marketplace activity this year between the master challenge on the mgles and i think that kept the mgles afloat the entire season right and because there are in my opinion still too many rares that pump out it might as well just be they're all commons at this point for the stars right they're they are what they are but um i love the platform fast break is badass i just think that just if you're getting into it just be nervous buying a ton of the moments at the beginning of next series without that star at the yeah, top. That's a good call. Good call. King Brett, what about you? Uh, honestly, right now I'm thinking about uh, eating some queso. And, nice. Um, you know, and thinking about the Mavs. But, dude, I mean, Nebraska Chase, we got to meet in real life at an RL event. Um, yep. Hopefully again, cool. too. In the Mavs uh, Discord, you're always in there. You're always communicating. Uh, you're a great aspect and a great person to have in our community in general. So I'm glad we uh, were finally able to get you on, especially in an episode where we can talk Mavs yep. uh, as well. So, um, and the only other thing I would say is next time you're going to buy a bunch of stuff and you're not going to tell anyone after you buy them, then tell me. There and you go. And then tell everybody else. Yeah. So, yeah, I get yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. Me, then CNC then Badge County, yeah, right. and the rest of the world. That's how it works. That's a good way to do it. It's a pleasure yeah. meeting all of you guys. Um, Enjoy it. Have me back anytime. Let me know when you come to Dallas. And Hell let's yeah. uh, have a little IRL event again. You Whether that be at a bar, basketball court, whatever. I love it. I love it. Torque, what you got? Brett pretty much summed it up, man. That's that. that, that I, I can't say it any better than that. I uh, I hate everything else in life, but I love all of y'all. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's go. Man. Let's go. Hey. Listen, you guys keep you guys uh, keep me afloat with the good vibes, and I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for joining us, Nebraska Chase, Torque, King Brett. See you next time, fam. Stay out of trouble. What we what we gonna eat tonight, King Brett? Oh, some queso, baby. Queso.